before we actually start writing Swift code, let's talk about what Swift is and give you a brief history, right? It's good to know what's going on with the language before you start learning. So Swift is relatively new. It was a, uh, a surprise announcement at WWDC back in 2014. Like developers had no clue it was coming. They're watching the announcements and it's like, holy crap, a whole new language? Like everything changed back in 2014 when Swift was announced. What the engineers at Apple did was they took all their previous knowledge with Objective-C and everything, because Objective-C is you know 30 years old, and they did all their research on the new and modern languages and, and where things were going. And they took all that and they built Swift, Apple's next generation programming language that is for their future. Now, a lot of people always ask me, you know, because native iOS development, it, admittedly, it is a niche programming language. It's not as widespread as, you know, Java or JavaScript or, or Python, uh, but it is niche. So a lot of people ask me, like, if I become an iOS developer, like, does that limit my career choices? And I always say, like, as a, as a Swift developer, or iOS developer, whatever you want to call it, you're, you're tying your career to Apple. And as long as you believe that Apple's not going anywhere and it's going to be around for a long time, you know, into AR, VR, whatever direction they go, I think that's a pretty safe bet. Speaking of safety, amazing segue, uh, one of Swift's major selling points is it's just a, a safe language. Uh, there's type safety, objects, you know, can't be nil unless you use optional. Basically, the, a big thing of Swift is you want to have a lot of compile time errors, not runtime errors. As a new programmer, newly aspiring programmer, that may have meant nothing to you. Basically what that means is uh, Swift tends to give you errors at the time of writing your compode or when the code compiles in Xcode. Whereas runtime errors are you don't know about the error until the app crashes and then you got to debug. So you're going to see a lot of compile time errors before you can even build your app with Swift. Let's run through Swift's very brief history. Again, it was announced in 2014 uh, just to let you know kind of how Swift has evolved over the past couple years. Now, Swift had some massive changes and very rapidly in its early days. And the reason you should know this as a new beginning Swift developer is because if you look for a blog post or maybe a Stack Overflow answer or some resource that is old and hasn't been updated since, you know, 2015, 2016, that can get you in a lot of trouble. Because again, through 2014, 15, 16, 17, Swift has changed a lot. But the good news is that change is starting to slow and Swift is slowly starting to mature. All right, back to the beginning. Like I said before, it was a surprise announcement in 2014. By 2015, Swift 2.0 was announced, and it was also announced at WWDC in 2015 that Swift was going to go open source later that year. It ended up going open source in Swift 2.2 uh, later, like in December of 2015. Now, open source was a big deal because that meant the iOS developer community as a whole could contribute to Swift language itself. If you ever want to look into this, go to swift.org. You can see the forums and see the discussions on proposals uh, that are going to be implemented into Swift. Now, don't get me wrong. This is like heavy language implementation details. Most of it's even over my head. But if you are interested in like how the language gets built or, you know, what new things are coming to the language, that's a spot to go look. Now, going open source was a big deal. But in 2016, Swift 3 came out and that was a huge deal. That was dubbed uh, the Great Renaming. Basically, what happened between Swift 2 and Swift 3 was a ton of breaking changes in Swift's API. So it was a nightmare converting a Swift 2 code base to a Swift 3 code base because so much broke and so much changed. However, Swift 2 to Swift 3 was kind of like just ripping off the Band-Aid, right? It was a ton of pain right there. But, you know, Swift 3 to Swift 4, Swift 4 to Swift 5, and upcoming Swift 5 to Swift 6 have been a breeze compared to that. So they kind of got all the all the pain out of the way going from Swift 2 to Swift 3. So again, when you're looking at old resources or old blog posts, if it was done in Swift 2, whew, stay away from it. But like I said, after that major Swift 3 pain, uh, it's been smooth sailing since then. Swift 4 came out in 2017, but Swift 4 kind of uh, was the last major number release at WWDC. Up until Swift 4, again, every dub dub, uh, which was June of every year, we would get a new Swift, Swift 3, Swift 4. Well, they've kind of slowed down since then. And, you know, WWDC 2018 was Swift 4.2. It has slowed down. And they recently announced with on the roadmap to Swift 6 that, you know, there's no major year release. Uh, it's just going to release when it's ready, which is great. I, I love that because it almost felt like they were rushing features into the language to make the annual release cycle. And, you know, they've kind of learned and said, you know what? Swift 6 will release when it's ready. No release date. Uh, it'll come. Again, that along with the fact that, you know, the changes coming aren't major breaking changes shows that the language is maturing. 
And because the language is maturing, we're starting to see it leak out into non-Apple native platforms. For example, uh, machine learning at Google via TensorFlow, uh, that is done in Swift now. That's in part to Chris Latner, who is one of the main developers behind creating and launching Swift at Apple. He had left uh, for Google and brought Swift over to TensorFlow. He has since left Google as well, just recently, but uh, he was spearheading uh, Swift at Google as well. So you know it, it got a good foundation over there. And now you can also write server code in Swift. Uh, Swift is almost ready for Windows. That's being actively worked on. But again, Swift is such a young language that you know it may not be on all these other platforms yet, but you can start to see the beginnings of it. And if you kind of fast forward your mind five to 10 years, uh, it's looking pretty good. Now we're about to go into a bunch of videos about the basics of the Swift language. I wanna reiterate that these are just uh, high level videos, right? Uh, a lot of these topics could be almost whole courses in and of themselves, uh, or at least multiple 10, 15 minute videos. Again, like I said before, this is supposed to be your first video, just your exposure to this world. So again, these topics will be pretty high level, but it is a good foundation for your future learning. Speaking of future learning, I wanna recommend a couple of resources for you to check out uh, to again, just expand your world of Swift. First is the uh, Swift programming language book directly from Apple. A little bit of a warning, and we're gonna talk about this later in the, in the books video, uh, but this is basically Apple's instruction booklet for Swift. So it is pretty technical. I'm re I remember reading it as somebody who had never coded before and just started my Swift journey, which may be exactly where some of you are at. Uh, it was way over my head, but it is a very valuable piece of information. So I do recommend at least checking it out. But again, don't get discouraged if you don't get any of it. It's a pretty technical book for beginners. What is geared towards beginners is the Swift Playgrounds app. And I definitely recommend downloading that. It's free to download. Uh, it came out a couple years ago and it's being actively maintained. Like every year or so, you'll see a pretty big update to the app that adds a bunch of new features. So that app is still growing, but that's a great way to get started and, and play around as well. They, they do a good job of gamifying things. And in the description of this video, I'm gonna leave two more links. One is to the actual like Swift website page if you wanna check that out for another big overview. And then another is a, a pretty fun video about the reveal of Swift at uh, WWDC in 2014. And you can hear like the gasps in the audience. It's pretty cool to go back and watch. So that's a brief history of Swift. Let's start writing some code.